I received a question about the subject of confidence. When is confidence good? When is confidence bad? When is it good to be confident? And when are you just being prideful and puffed up? Let's look at Psalm 27, 1 through 3. Psalm 27 and verse 1. A Psalm of David. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, come upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise up against me, in this will I be confident. This to me is the perfect verse showing the right kind of confidence. He said, in this will I be confident. When his enemies, his foes, encamp against him in war, he isn't afraid because the Lord is the strength of his life. David is a mighty man. I'd say he was much more physically fit than any of these athletes you're seeing on ESPN. I'm sure he could win any modern MMA fight without watching any film or training first. I mean, he would look at these Paul Logan fights and laugh at it. That would be like him breaking up two of, two of his little kids fighting. And in Psalm 144 and verse 1, he said, Blessed be the Lord my strength, which te teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight. Which, with so much physical strength and knowledge of war, it would have been easy for David to put confidence in his own flesh. However, he trusted in the Lord. He was trusting in the Lord from the very first time that you saw him step on the scene. Look at 1 Samuel seventeen thirty four through 36. It says, And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the, out of the flock. And David said, And I went after him, and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and smote him, and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine, talking about Goliath the giant, shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. David took on a lion, a bear, the giant. We thought it was something when Samson killed the lion with his bare hands. However, David killed a lion and a bear when he was just a young kid and without the strength that Samson had. But notice now in 1 Samuel seventeen thirty seven, who does David give credit to? David said, Moreover, the Lord, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he would deliver me out of the hand of these, uh, out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. David had a lot more going for him to be confident in himself than me and you do physically. However, he still trusted in the Lord. And that is where his confidence is. Psalm 118, 8 and 9, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. If you put your trust in the Lord, then it doesn't matter if the whole world is lined up against you. If God wants you alive and wants you to have victory, then your enemies can be innumerable and it wouldn't even matter. In Leviticus 26, 8, it says, And five of you shall chase and a hundred, and a hundred of you shall put 10,000 to flight, and your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. Remember uh, when Asa, back there in Kings and Chronicles, when he didn't have as many men as those Ethiopians, the Ethiopians had, had a, a million man army, and Asa and Judah cried unto the Lord, and the Lord saved them, even though they were greatly outnumbered. What are you putting your confidence in? I remember when Stephen Curry was putting Bible verses on his sneakers, and one of the verses was Philippians 4.13. And when I seen him do it, he put, I can do all things. But he left off the best part. The rest of the verse said, Through Christ which strengtheneth me. That's the part you want. You want both parts, but that's the best part. You can't do anything without the Lord's strength. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. 
Romans 5, 6. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Jesus Christ had more strength than you have when he was dying on the cross. You need to see yourself without strength. That is why fasting is so good. It isn't about the going without eating. It is a, it's that when you have been without food, you realize how weak you really are. You realize how much more strong God is than you are. Ephesians 6.10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might, not strong in yourself and in your own power. The good kind of confidence is to have confidence because you got the Lord. But there is a bad kind of confidence. In Proverbs 14, 16, A wise man feareth and departeth from evil, but the fool rageth and is confident. When you think you can take on the world in your own strength, you're in rough shape. When you see the boxers and the UFC fighters coming out of the tunnel into the ring, that's the wrong kind of confidence. All that bouncing around and showboating and, and just with that proud look and a haughty spirit. When you see basketball players walking to the locker room with their headphones on and the nice clothes on and the shoes that cost more than your car with their head in the air, that's the wrong kind of confidence. The only reason that they're still alive and breathing is because God let them have air in their lungs when they got up this morning. Paul says in Philippians 3 and verse 3, For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Paul had no confidence in his flesh. He said in Romans seven eighteen, For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. You may be, you may be able to work out, or outwork everybody on the job, but you're still just a body, if that's all you got. I mean, if you fell and broke your leg, they would have you replaced tomorrow. When your confidence is in your own flesh, you're going to fail. Your flesh is going to give out. If not today, it will eventually. Your eyes are going to wax dim. Your ears will get dull of hearing. You'll lose your mind. Your legs will give out. We will all get in that shape. Maybe even while I'm young, I'll be in that shape. But if you have the Lord, then there is something in you that's still going to be kicking. These athletes, as a general rule, influence people until they retire at a young age of 35 to 40 years old. In sports, that is old. In the ministry, that's young. The best preachers are up in their 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. I mean, I, I barely even listen to preachers under 60-something years old. And these men don't have any confidence in the flesh. They have trouble getting out of bed in the morning a lot of times. Their flesh failed them a long time ago, but the Lord never did fail them. So why would they put confidence in the flesh? It's going to fail you. Your flesh is going to fail you, but Jesus Christ is not going to fail you. The athletes work all through the offseason to build up muscle and strength so that they can be more confident when they get in the game, so that they can win awards and trophies and get a corruptible crown. But we're looking for that incorruptible crown. And Paul said in 1 Timothy 4, 8, For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. Bodily exercise may help you a little bit in this life that now is, but not in the one that's to come. Godliness helps you in this life and the world to come. Bodily exercise isn't a bad thing, but a lot of times it just makes you put confidence in the flesh. The more muscles a man has, the more he will be tempted to rely on his own strength instead of leaning on the everlasting arms of the Lord Jesus Christ. The more curves a woman has, the more she will be tempted to rely on her beauty. It would be great if you were pretty, but there are advantages to being ugly. You will be less tempted to put, to put confidence in the flesh. There are advantages to being physically weak. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 10.10, For his letters, say they, are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech contemptible. Paul's bodily presence was weak. And he says in 2 Corinthians 12.7-10, 
and lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. His strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. Now here it is. For when I am weak, then am I strong. The best kind of confidence is being confident in the Lord. That should be where you're placing your confidence. The weaker Paul was, the more he relied on the Lord. The more he relied on the Lord, the stronger he was. Paul was better off with his bodily presence being weak than Conor McGregor is with his bodily presence being strong and being able to beat up anybody. Even when it comes to salvation, a lot of people believe on Jesus Christ and then they put confidence in the flesh to keep their salvation. And that's wrong. In Philippians 1.6, Paul said, Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. The Lord's going to perform it. Put confidence in him. He's keeping your salvation. Ruth 2.12 The Lord recompense thy work, and a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings thou art come to trust. Trust in the Lord. 2 Samuel 22, 31. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in him. Psalm 20 and verse 7. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Isaiah 31, 1. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. And stay on horses, and trust in chariots, because they are many, and in horsemen, because they are very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. It's a bad thing to put your trust in physical weapons and fighting physically and things like that. It's, it's not good to put your trust in those things. Put your trust in the Lord. Psalm 115, 9-11. O oh Israel, trust thou in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. O oh house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Proverbs 3, 5 and 3, 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lead not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. The more talent and beauty and skill you have, the easier it will be to put confidence in yourself. The less of all that you have, the easier it will be to trust in the Lord. So there are advantages to being ugly and not having a talent or a singing ability or a drawing ability or a painting ability because you're going to trust in the Lord more, most likely. So no matter how beautiful or talented you are, you shouldn't ever get to the point where you begin to lean on your own skill instead of leaning on God. The reason men seem to get more humble and conservative as they grow older is because they go through, go through some things that humble them. And, and it makes them realize that they can't do it all themselves. They go through some things and it, it makes them lose all them things they used to have. They start getting wrinkles. They start getting that uh, midlife sag going on in the midsection. They're not as good looking as they used to be. They don't get to work out as much. I mean, you get older and everything just starts sagging, sag, bag, and drag. I mean, you, when you go down to tie your shoes, you look around and think and, and see if there's anything else you can do while you're down there. I mean, the older you get, the more you realize this flesh is failing you, it's betraying you. You put all that trust in it. You put all that upkeep on it, and now what's it getting you? You... You're not as handsome as you used to be. You're not as pretty as you used to be. You can't run like you used to run. You can't beat up people like you used to beat them up. But if you're saved, you got something in you that's just as alive and more alive than anything that you even know of. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. The right kind of confidence is complete confidence in Jesus Christ to get you through any situation, to save your soul, to keep you saved. The wrong kind of confidence is is any confidence that you're putting in yourself 
That would be when it's a sin. That would be when pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before the a fall. 